Hello and welcome to my Vintage Audio File channel. This is now my 17th video in my series of uh, reviews of both old and new equipment. Um, today I'm going to be reviewing um, a brand that a lot of people probably either haven't heard of or don't associate with higher quality stuff. And that is uh, the brand Craig. Craig's been around since about 1963, and they still exist these th these days. Uh, in fact, they were just uh, acquired by some uh, capital investment firm a few months ago to uh, continue uh, um, providing uh, uh, products into the future. Um, like I said, they were uh, they've been around a long time, but they've never been considered a a high-end brand they were more of a lower end brand um, basically a, a budget brand for people who had tight budgets and uh, needed something that uh, wasn't going to break their bank and that's what they've been providing for over 50 years um, in the mid 70s they did briefly for a few years try to spiff up their image by releasing some home stereo equipment that was called their series 5000 line that was actually very decent stuff um this was in, res in response to all the uh um escalating so-called stereo wars of the 70s where uh brands were investing huge amounts of money and making huge huge amounts of money off the uh, willing public um, and they wanted a piece of the action too so they uh, produced their own own line and it uh, was a good line um, but uh, I think the thing that hurt them was there was so much competition out there number one and number two people were so used to the name Craig meaning not high-end that people didn't buy them and so after a few years they stopped making them and, and went back to what they did best and that was making uh, budget friendly uh, stuff for the market that uh, was nothing new and exciting cutting edge it was just mainly the same stuff that everybody else was putting out at a uh, smaller cost um, the one I have in front of you today was made probably around 75 or so um, was the uh, series 5000 5502 it was uh, one of about six receivers they ended up making uh, during those years um, not all at once but uh, um, like two or three per year they they made and this one is probably around 40 watts channel it is uh, very nice quality um, as you can see it looks a lot like most of your standard uh, um, receivers of the time the one thing that made it also the old misnomer back in the the day in the 70s was that if a receiver came out and it had like a cardboard issue pegboard type of back on the back of it where all the stuff plugged into then it probably wasn't high quality it was a cost kind of measure this one here is got steel throughout and so that uh, is an attestment to the fact that they wanted to make something a little higher quality um, this has like I say a lot of the same buttons you're gonna find on most stereos back then but it also had a few uh, um, things on it that uh, were reserved more for higher end um, separates and receivers um, it had your standard on off button standard quarter inch uh, headphone jack it had a myriad of different speaker options on here you could do a what they called remote because uh, there was two different uh, speaker connectors on the back for two pairs of speakers you could uh, put just the back speakers on or you could put it in, in this mode and it would put both 
all four of them on at the same time. Or then you could switch over and just do the fronts. Then it had a button here that if you push, put it in that mode called matrix, it would uh, blend the uh, channels to give it kind of a uh, quad surround sound type of uh, effect. And then there was also a balance where everything would be balanced evenly so, so that uh, it was uh, just, uh, it was kind of a button that I never really used because it really didn't seem like it did much for me. And then of course you had your standard bass and treble and balance, volume, your source selector for AM, FM mono, FM stereo, phono, and uh, auxiliary. It does have uh, also tape um, play and record on the back, which is controlled by um, the monitor button, which if you push it in, you'll play, be able to play what's on the, what's plugged into those jacks. It's got a muting button, a high blend button, a high and low um, frequency cut buttons, which is something you usually didn't see on your lower end uh, receivers, and a loudness button. And of course the uh, standard turning dial for your uh, the radio reception. Um, it's currently turned off. There's nothing wrong with it except for the fact that there are a few indicator lights burnt out. Um, but as you can see when I do turn it on, the ones that are done are uh, showing and uh, you can see it's currently in stereo. It's on FM and um, it should be some more lights over here and over here but uh, bulbs are burnt out. I've got the bulbs on order just haven't arrived yet. Uh, I was hoping they could arrive before I did a review on this so that you could see it in all of its glory. Maybe when I do get a uh, the bulbs in I, I could do a uh, bulb replacement demonstration on this and then you could see what it looks like when everything's lit up. So that's what the front looks like. Uh, one thing that to distinguish it also from other uh, receivers that were out there, if you noticed this goes up about 30% here and then it slowly angles itself back. Uh, which was a little different than most receivers out there of the day where they were just all completely flat faced. This one they uh, angled it a little bit and uh, some people I don't think really cared for that design because um, it was unusual, something new. Um, but that's what they did to try to do to make their uh, receiver stand out. Um, I'm going to pause the video for a, a moment here uh, and turn it around so that you can see what it looks like on the back and bear with me I'll be right back okay thank you for waiting um, I have the uh, um, receiver turned around now and you can see it looks pretty much like your standard receivers of the day um, with the metal instead of the uh, fiberboard like the cheap cheap ones had um, you'll see that there is a fuse here that you can replace. Uh, it, it is designed to blow if there's a power surge or something going wrong with the uh, receiver that uh, it makes uh, this blow to save the receiver from being further damaged, which is always a good thing. And it has your two sets of speakers, a switched and unswitched uh, um, uh, adapter to plug in other components. Um, it also has a de-emphasis uh, thing which is at 25 and 75. That, that's something that's used for um, the, the radio. There is a four channel output here which I believe is also for the radio. Um, ground, you got your tape 
in and out. You have your auxiliary, your phono, and then you've got your AM and FM antenna um, wires, which are standard style in that time with the dipole T type of uh, antenna, and then your AM antenna here. Uh, there is a lot of fins for heat dissipation, which is always a good thing. And um, like I say, it looks like your standard receiver on the back. This thing probably weighs about 25 pounds. Um, by no means a big, heavy Pioneer or Morantz or Sansui beefy one that they would put out, but it is definitely decent quality. You'll also see on top here that it's got a real nice uh, um, lattice, lattice uh, grill set up for further heat dissipation. And um, I'm going to pause the video one more time. I promise that'll be the last time. Um, and that is so that I can take the cover off and show you what the inside looks. Um, you may be surprised to see what's inside or in certain cases what isn't. Um, bear with me and I'll be right back. So here I am back again and as you can see the cover is off of this now. It is very clean inside considering that it's uh, over 40, probably about 45 years old. Um, right up front you'll notice that uh, these things here those are all light bulbs that are easily replaced. Like I say, I'm waiting for them to come in to, so I can replace them. It does have a fairly decent sized uh, transformer and uh, amplifier section with two 4700 microfarad um, capacitors for the, the power. Then you have the radio section with the antenna that goes over to the here so that you can uh, get reception. <coughs> and the uh, string dial that is used to turn the cogs inside here for getting your radio reception, different stations. And uh, the other thing you can probably see from this is the fact that it's relatively bare. Um, that sometimes make, is an indication of not very good quality stuff, but in this case, they used all the right components in all the right places to make a really nice sounding uh, stereo, and they had space to boot. Um, it is a very nice, neatly laid out um, inside, which is uh, makes it really easy to work on it if you ever had to. Uh, I haven't had to so far, it works just fine. And um, a lot of the more fancy, bigger stereos will be so crowded inside that it makes them almost impossible to work on without moving things out of the way. This here is much more easier to work on and uh, it uh, will give you the same quality in most cases as some of the more fancier brand names at a fraction of the price. These uh, don't come up for sale very often on the uh, used market and that's probably because the people who have them really like them and uh, tend to keep them. You will find um, some comments online from other people who own these particular line of Craigs that uh, they are very happy with them and they're very much sleepers. And if you ever happen to come by one um, and you're looking for something that uh, is good quality, easy to work on, and aren't hung up about the name brand that much. Um, you can't go wrong if you find one of these and you're probably gonna find it at a 
minuscule price compared to some of the more well-known brand names. Um, so uh, that is what I have to talk about today with this particular receiver. Hopefully um, you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I um, tried to show as much knowledge as I know of this uh, receiver and, and the maker of it. And if you have any comments or questions about this video or challenge me on anything I've talked about, tell me that I'm all wrong, um, feel free to do so. Um, otherwise, uh, have a great day. Uh, like, like this video if you want to. Please subscribe and uh, I will see you with my next video. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Goodbye.